It's your boy, Coach Rob619, back with another review. In today's review, I'll be discussing Rosa's Dove's The Parfum. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get all my new content as soon as I release it. So in today's review, like I said, we'll be discussing this fragrance right here, Rosa Dove The Parfum. And this fragrance is a pretty expensive one. As I think we're all familiar with this house, Rosa Dove, most of this stuff is pretty expensive. And this one being um, Fortnum & Mason, it's an exclusive. And if you're anything like me, you've never heard of Fortnum & Mason. And what I'm assuming is, um, <clears throat> I got the box right here. What I'm assuming is that this house is only in the UK, but obviously they ship worldwide. And um, <clears throat> this one, I won this one in one of those uh, fragrance raffle pages that I always talked about. If you've been following me for a while, you heard of Totally Fragrance Raffle. Um, they have a few other ones now on Facebook. So I won this pretty much for $11 um, in a raffle. And obviously it's about, uh, it's real expensive, but I think it goes for about 500 to 550 retail. So I wouldn't have never paid that much for a fragrance. And I don't recommend nobody to pay that much, unless you got money. I don't know what your finances is, but if you got the money to spend and you love it, obviously spend for it. But if you're trying to blind buy something like this, or you just, you know, love the bottle, because this is a beautiful bottle, but if you love the bottle and you just want to, and you heard good things about it from other viewers, or, and you want to just run out and just drop that money, please make sure you sniff this before you go out and spend this kind of cash on a fragrance. So to jump right into it, what I get from this fragrance, um, I get, in the opening, I get like a burning, um, smoky, uh, I think it's oud. There's this note called um, uh, castorium. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is supposed to be like a beaver secretion or something like that. Uh, and it's, it's real, like pungent, um, kind of musky and, and, and um, like leathery. That's, that's what I get in the opening of this, a real pungent, leathery. Um, vibe. So I don't know if that's the ood. I don't know if that's that uh, note I just mentioned because um, some ooze, and that's why I was turned off. If you follow me for a long time, you know I'm a big aquatic, citrus, um, freshy uh, scent kind of person, um, art collector, phrase collector, whatever you want to call me. Um, and that ood note is, is it was that skanky ood is off putting. But as the years went on, um, I'm noticing a lot of these houses are are already changing that oud. You normally in the beginning all I got was either a medicinal oud or a skank oud. Now you start to get some smooth oud fragrances. Um, and this one has that 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 pungent oud that I didn't like in in, um, in older fragrances. But <clears throat> this does get better as the mid and the dry down comes in. So the opening pungent, leathery, um, kind of skanky oud. Um, which it takes a while for the dry down. I'm talking about an hour, hour and a half before that burning, smoky, medicinal uh, oud settles down. But when the and when the mid comes, and you kind of get this in the beginning also. But when the mid comes, you get the oud, you get peach um, and rose. So it's that rose oud combo that has been done to death in um, in niche fragrance, niche perfumery. In my opinion, the rose oud combo has to go. It's kind of like in the beginning. People would not designers and say, oh, they're fresh, they're safe, they're mass appealing, and they're, they're, they're boring. And to me, and I, I kind of get that, but to me, the niche has become this ooh rose combo, ooh this, ooh that, ooh that. And to me, that's getting kind of boring. It's just it's getting played out. And um, to me, so I, I get this similar ooh rose combo. I smoked a thousand times in this. The skanky ooh, I smoked a thousand times in this. But once that dies down, you're going to do a, a, a peach rose ooh combo develops and you're gonna get a peach with a little bit of rose sub, sub, like a subtle rose in the background but it comes off feminine and that's the one thing i don't like about this outside of that outside of that pun and opening i don't like that uh that rose ooh combo it reminds me it's kind of like this powdery and it's that it's like a grandma vibe to me when i smell this i think of a, a luxury something like luxury fragrance that grandma was wear a rich somebody's rich grandmother would, would go well in this from the opening to the mid but that rose subsides that oo subsides and that peach becomes a little bit more prominent and that oo becomes a, a normal wood like a like a like a um not santal but like a, a cedar it becomes more of like a cedar smelling wood and peach and spices start to develop in, in, a, in, a, um, in a base and that's when it becomes masculine so with that peach 
that cedar kind of wood and the spice, this becomes a great fragrance if you can get through that beginning and mid to the dry down. That's the only part of this fragrance that becomes masculine to me. So, it sounds like something you may like. And some of you guys may like that opening. You may like that, that wood opening and that, um, you know, that kind of skanky mid. You may like that and that may be your thing. But for me, I just like the dry down. And um, I can't, I wouldn't be able to pay retail price, that price for this just for that that peach uh, dry down. So I've been looking for a fragrance with a nice peach in it. And um, I thought this would be a luxury version of it, but I can't do it. So uh, for me, this is a this is a pass if I had to pay retail. Um, but it does have a nice peach note in it that I think some will, some will find and, and, and love. But for me, um, for that retail price, this is, this is not, I don't, I don't want this for 550, you know what I'm saying? That's just too much to spend. But like I said, some may love it. Um, now, as far as the performance, this does perform pretty well. And I think that's where the, the, the quality ingredients come, come into play because this projects like a beast. Like that that opening is strong. It's beastly. More than three sprays, you're going to choke somebody out. Um, it does calm down in the mid in a dry down. I would say it's kind of close to the skin, but this lasts easily 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours. You're going to smell this all day. You put in your clothes. This stuff is going to stick to your clothes for, for a week if you don't wash it. So performance-wise, I get this A+. Plus. Um, Smell-wise, I get this maybe a C+. Plus. And um, projection, I mean, uh, sillage, um, I'll probably give it about a, a B. It has, it has decent sillage. It's not really a major trail like train smoke, but it is going to, people around you are going to pick it up. Um, compliment factor. I haven't received a compliment with this. Um, I haven't had it in a long time, so I gotta be honest with that. I only wore it two times. Um, I'm about to swap it off, so um, I don't have a lot of experience in it to say compliments, but I just couldn't see myself receiving too many compliments with this unless it was in that dry down, that dry down period. But from the first couple of hours, um, I think this would be better suited for a woman. Um, I think this would be great. Like I said, this is an older woman's fragrance, um, lux luxurious rich older woman i think will really pull this off guys um i don't know you better than me if you can pull this one off but guys that's my review on rosia dove the perfume um what is that mason and fortnum and mason is exclusive depending on what the ladies say it determines where i spray peace